Hello again, Tim Spector here of the Zoe COVID study, talking a special update on boosters, uh, jabs, and how well they're working and if they're safe. And more than 240,000 of you have now uh, given us your data on your booster jabs and told us how you felt afterwards. And we know how many of you have also developed COVID after it. So. Uh, we now have some data to feed back to you. Uh, before that, I just want to clarify some of the terminology around this, which is very confusing and maybe different in different countries. So things I'm saying here are really only uh, for the UK as far as I'm aware. Um, boosters are being offered to all individuals who received vaccination uh, in phase one of the, the program six months after completion of the primary uh, vaccine course. Generally, it's people aged over 50 and those that are healthcare workers who are eligible. Um, so do book yourself in for that, um, even if you had uh, an AstraZeneca starter uh, dose, uh, it doesn't matter, um, you are, are eligible. Now, most people are getting the Pfizer booster some people may be uh, getting the moderna booster in which case that is at half the original dose now there's something called a third primary dose which is being offered to those with severe immunosuppression uh, and who either either have a disease or on certain drugs at the time of getting their uh, first or second doses so they people who wouldn't expect the antibody immune response to be quite as good and this is trying to give those people an extra boost so that their immune system is better primed against the infection and that's why uh, the third primary dose is being given uh, eight weeks after the second dose not having to wait the full uh, six months that uh, other uh, people are generally getting and the Moderna and the Pfizer vaccines are currently being used for this uh, primarily. So this is all subject to review and the uh, advisory board will continue to monitor and, and tell us what's going on. Um, so after a lot of uh, searching and discussion, and it's really not available as far as we could see on any of the NHS uh, websites, uh, we can confirm that the booster dose, um, the Pfizer booster dose is exactly the same uh, dose as in the first and second doses of the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, as I said earlier, the Moderna is half the dose as it is much stronger and may not need that uh, higher dose at the beginning. Um, and even if you're immunocompromised and having that third uh, primary dose, uh, it appears to be the same dose just given earlier. Um, we can't at the moment log the difference between a third dose and a booster, so just put it in and as the doses are the same, uh, we'll sort it out, whatever, it, whatever it's been called uh, as you go and get that jab. Uh, at the moment they are all the same, but there is going to be some confusion uh, because of this name. So it may be called a booster, maybe called a third uh, uh, shot. And uh, some of you who are listening who are immunocompromised ought to listen to our webinar on this subject. We had, whereas I was talking to a couple of experts on this and, and lots of Q&A that would be useful. So that uh, link is below. Now, uh, should everyone get a booster if you've been vaccinated? Um, the short answer is yes. Although the two shots gave uh, good protection early on, that was slightly less uh, with the Delta and that also is slightly less with time. So we think that the latest data is showing that people who have had uh, three shots of the vaccine are getting something like 95% uh, protection as opposed to 70 or 80% uh, after the uh, six months of the other one. So really important. And 
we do have some data on this. Uh, so uh, hardly any of, the, of you who logged your booster vaccine have got reinfected. 99% uh, didn't, which is good. Uh, so just over 1% did get reinfected. And that's lower than we recorded after the first uh, single shot, where it was about 5.3% got reinfected and 1.43% uh, got infected uh, after two doses of the Pfizer. So uh, this, is, this is good news. So it looks like it's at least on these crude estimates, 50% better than just having uh, the, the double jab. And uh, in terms of the side effects, they're really nothing to worry about. Um, we compared people aged over 50, uh, who are most of the people who have been getting this at the moment, uh, reported their first and second dose of Pfizer. And if you remember that generally side effects got worse with the Pfizer vaccine on the second one compared to the first, although they started at a very low level. So the, most people didn't get any side effects, but those that did uh, can anticipate a slightly worsening the second time round. And in this case, we got something in the middle. So 14% of users reported systemic side effects of so things like shivering, uh, headaches, uh, fatigue, uh, etc. that just lay them low. Um, so that's relatively small proportion. And that compared with 10% on the first uh, jab and 16.5% on the second jab. So uh, certainly not getting worse. And that's all very reassuring. So uh, most people don't have a problem, whether it's the, uh, the second or third dose. And I know some people were worried about that. Um, if, if you've been previously infected, uh, you're more likely to have a slightly worse systemic response, exactly the same as in the first or second uh, doses. Uh, and this doesn't seem to matter so far. We haven't looked in great detail, but it's likely to be the same whether that infection was before or after uh, your second dose. And this is all in line with what uh, the immunology uh, uh, theory is. Similarly, uh, if you didn't get a big reaction after your vaccine doses, um, you're slightly less likely to uh, get a protection as you have a lower immune response. Uh, at the moment, that's more hypothesis. We haven't proven it yet, and we'll bring you more detail as soon as we've, we've really analyzed that data. And, and what we're hoping is that from other studies, uh, particularly in Israel, showing that it doesn't sort of matter how you responded to the first two, that third booster brings everyone up to a similar level. So we're not getting that missing 20% that might be at high risk of reinfection. Um, I think boosters should take priority over, say, vaccination programs in the children in the UK at the moment, because uh, at least half of them have probably already been infected. And I think we're just too late. We have probably missed the wave. Uh, and that caused this problem over the last few months. And we've been much slower than rolling it out to younger age groups than other countries. And we haven't even uh, approved it for anyone aged under 12. Uh, at the moment. Um, and so uh, I think we just have to wait and see on that, focus on the booster program, uh, rather than worrying too much about doing children, most of them who will have already been uh, infected. Um, and I think that this booster, this third vaccine, is the number one route for uh, the UK to get out of these high rates and get uh, the hospitalizations down uh, before the end of the year. Uh, but it, it's reassuring data we're getting so far. So hopefully that answers some of your preliminary questions on uh, boosters. Uh, do let us know how you get on. Tell us about any side effects uh, or whether things are mild, whether you get no side effects, and particularly whether you get any infections afterwards. Hopefully that is a, a decreasing number as also your risk should be dropping as rates start to drop to 
to norm, more normal levels at least. So keep an, an eye on our website for details. Do subscribe to the channel to get any updates and stay safe and keep logging.